You're watching the Jay Kaminsky YouTube channel. Hey, I'm Jay Kaminsky, two-time Olympic silver medalist in the sport of archery, and today I'm here to talk to you about another episode of the bow tuning series that I've been working on. So this episode is going to basically cover how to do things, what to adjust, how to adjust it, how to measure it, how to document it, and so on. So because there is some confusion about what is bow weight, what is tiller, how do you adjust the settings, what is a rough rule of thumb, and uh, I think preference, pre prefacing this series that I've got working on, it's going to be really important for me to cover how to adjust these topics so that way I don't have to go into detail as uh, the series progresses. This, uh, this video will be great reference to reference back to if you're a very new shooter when it comes to this or if you're using a different language and the terminology doesn't translate. So anyway, so what we want to do today, I'm going to show you how to uh, adjust and measure and it, its effects the bow weight, the tiller, the brace height, center shot, arrow length versus draw length, and your sight, like how, how the sight moves. Also, we need to talk about knocking point, how to measure it and how to adjust it. Anyway, I'm gonna show you again how to adjust and measure these things. So it's very, very simple, pretty straightforward. I've got, you know, your standard Olympic recurve set up here. And I wanna show you first the uh, bow weight, how to adjust it, what it means, and I will show you with a bow scale how it works. So each limb, each set of limbs is marked with the actual draw weight on the limb. Now that's measured at a very specific distance on, uh, it's either 26 inches or 28 inches, depending on the manufacturer of the limb. The win and wins are measured at the shorter distance. So they're actually heavier than a Hoyt limb. If you were to compare apples to apples, you can't. There are a few pounds off because of that. Um, a rough rule of thumb is, just so you guys know, every inch of draw length you gain is roughly two-ish pounds, give or take. Um, I mean, it depends on the limb setups individually as far as the stiffness, the rigidity, the stacking, all that stuff really contributes to it, but that's just kind of a rough rule of thumb, at least that I was taught way back when. So um, draw length, is really important to take into consideration with your bow weight. So on this setup, I've got a clicker so I can consistently check my bow at the exact same draw length every single time. So basically, bow weight is adjusted with the tiller bolts or limb bolts. It depends on what you call them. I call them limb bolts, um, but some people call them tiller bolts. It can be confusing because some people say, oh, I adjusted my tiller bolts and they meant they adjusted their bow weight or whatever. So anyway, tiller or limb bolts, doesn't matter. The more you screw them in, the more that preloads the limb bend. So the bow weight goes up. Now the rough rule of thumb is give or take, you have about a 10% plus or minus adjustment. So if you've got a 25 pound limb, you're gonna have about two and a half pounds of adjustment. If you had a 40 pound limb, you'd have about four pounds of adjustment within the range of the bow. Now, I don't know specific to win and win how far in or out you can limit your bow, uh, your limb bolts. I know for sure on Hoyts, it's roughly six turns from all the way in. So you go all the way in and you can come out six turns and you can't go out any further. On a win and win, it's gonna be different. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna create a drawing. But if you look at the tent limb bolt here and you look at where the this side of the limb, the tip of it, you can see it touching the limb bolt in here. See it in there? And what you want to do is you don't want that tip to go further this direction of the center line of the limb bolt. So I'll come up with a little diagram and I'll be putting that up right now for you to check at. So you can see you don't wanna go too far out and you wanna stay in the middle or better uh, or down, right? So this is the top limb bolt. And then you do also don't wanna go in so far that this part of the limb bolt is pinching against the riser. So you wouldn't wanna go in past where this surface of the limb is sitting flat on the limb bolt. Now I'm only saying that because there are so many different risers out there. Not all of them have limits on how far in or out you can put the limbs. And there's not a lot of information out there. So I just wanted to make sure I noted that. So again, if you want your bow weight to go up, you screw your limb bolts in. If you want your bow weight to go down, you screw them out. 
I wouldn't go out any further really past this. So this is as light a setup as it's gonna be. So when you're moving limb bolts, there's two different types of limb bolts. There's this style, which is a collet style. You can see there's slits in the threads here. And then there's a uh, expander bolt that comes from the backside and expands these and locks them inside the riser. So I can screw it out by hand and you can see that that is going to lock the, the, the collet style. Then there's another style, which is typically a little bit of the older systems. Um, it's literally just a solid limb bolt with a lock on the backside that crush it pushes in and locks it in place. So first, when you're moving your, <clears throat> when you're first adjusting your limb bolts, you have to crack them loose from the backside. So all you do is just give them, I give them a turn um, on the collet style limb bolts. It's just really a turn, not really too important. The other style that it butts up against the limb bolt, if you're gonna go in five turns, you gotta back it off five turns. So anyway, you crack it free, and I'm gonna measure my bow weight first with the clicker. <clears throat> so I have a regular bow scale here, nothing fancy. Let's see, once it zeroes, so it's set in pounds. And then I hook it underneath the knock, and I pull it back, I point it in a safe location until it clicks, and then I let down. And so this one's set to read maximum weight. This one is set up at uh, 31.02 pounds. I'm gonna tar it. <clears throat> this is just a light set of practice limbs I've got on this bow. I'm gonna check it again, just to be sure. 30.84, so I'm gonna say 31 pounds. Now let's say I wanted to go up in bow weight. I already backed the lock off. Now I'm gonna move the limbs in one, I'm gonna go one and a half turns. On top and bottom, you have to do both equally. One and a half. All right, now I'm gonna check it again. I'm at 31.8. All right, zero it. Thirty-one point nine. So it's pretty simple. Screw the limb bolts in, the bow weight goes up. Screw the limb bolts out, the weight goes down. Something to quickly note about bow weight is that when you're using a bow scale like this, it's pulling from one location on the string, a very central small point. And as you pull back, you see the string conforms to the one hook, right? But when you're pulling the bow back with your three fingers, look at, this is very difficult. See how it's not one point like this, it's pulled back more because you're using three fingers to hold onto the string. You're actually pulling the, limb backs, the limbs back more with your fingers than you are with a scale. So that means that your bow weight is actually a little heavier when you're at full draw with your fingers compared to your scale. That'll change anywhere from a half to a pound and a half, depending on how heavy your setup is. I find in the heavier bow weights that your bow weight actually goes up about a pound-ish with your fingers. Um, I made a little jig that simulates my fingers on the string. Basically, I had a stamped piece of steel that I used to cut out all my cordovan leather pieces and I bent it into fingers and hooked it on the string with a hole in the back of it and uh, found out that I gained some extra bow weight. I've heard from other people that that was happening, but I just wanted to see for myself and I did verify it does go up about a pound at 45-ish uh, pounds for me, so just FYI. Next is tiller. What is tiller and how to adjust it? So tiller is the distance from the base of the limb where it mounts in the riser to the string, top and bottom. So you split them differently top to bottom because of where we're pulling our fingers on the string. But essentially how you measure it would be you take a, this is called a bow square. This is an L square and then there's also a T square. So instead of it looking, you know, like the letter L, it'd be a letter T. So you hold it against the base of the limb and then you rock it up and down like this until you find your shortest measurement. And you make note if it's on the front or the back side of the string, it doesn't matter. You just gotta be consistent from top to bottom. So this one's six and 15 sixteenths on the top. And on the bottom, I've got 
six and 13 sixteenths. So down here is shorter. It's about an eighth of an inch shorter, which is exactly what you're looking for. You wanna be roughly an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch shorter on the bottom than the top. The reason is when we're pulling the bow back, we're not pulling the bow back in the center of the actual bow. We're slightly off center because the arrow is not in the center of the bow. The arrow is slightly above center. So therefore our hand is also slightly above center and we're using one finger above and two below. So when we pull back to full draw, the limbs are imbalanced, meaning they're not equal top and bottom. So we adjust the tiller, we preload the bottom limb more than the top limb in order to compensate for those factors. So when we're at full draw, the limbs are balanced. Now, how do we adjust the tiller? It's very simple. It's the balance of the limb bolts top to bottom. So if I were to screw this bottom limb bolt in and preload this limb more, so I'm gonna make this limb stronger, watch what it does to the distance here. If I were to make this limb stronger, See how it's shortening this distance? So that's all it is. If you make one limb stronger, it's gonna pull the whole mechanism down and shorten the break or the, uh, the tiller down here. So right now I've got an eighth of an inch shorter on the bottom, but say if I wanted to bring it up to a quarter of an inch, which is still within the acceptable range, I've already got the back of the limb bolts loose. So now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a quarter turn on the bottom. Then I'm gonna take my bow square, you remeasure at the top, and I've got six and 15 sixteenths to the center of the string. And on the bottom, I've got six and three quarter. Well, yeah, about six and three quarter to the center of the string. So I've got three sixteenths now, which is more than an eighth. So I've gotta take it a quarter of an inch or a quarter turn more, and I'll have exactly where I need to be. Take my bow square. To the back side of the string, I've got seven inches. To the bottom, the back side of the string, I have six and three quarter. So there's my quarter inch tiller split. This is something that is extremely important to record and take make note of once you find your final tiller, but that's how you adjust tiller and what it does. Something to note about tiller is that it does slightly change your bow weight, but it's not enough to really even worry about in my experience. You just saw I did a turn and a half on the limb bolt and it got me 0 0.8, 0 0.9 pounds of adjustment on the bottom limb to get the quarter inch of tiller adjustment. I did less than a half a turn on one side, so it's probably less than a tenth of a pound total. Okay, so brace height. What is brace height and how do we adjust it? Brace height is simply the distance from the string to either the center of your plunger or the string to the throat of your grip. It's different for different people. Different people have different preferences. I choose to go from the string to the center of the plunger. The reason I do that is it's consistent from bow to bow. I change my grips from time to time. I modify them and not always do I have the same grips on everybody, every bow. So all I do, it's pretty simple. You can just, you can either hold the, the bow square like this against the string and then check your, your brace height, or you click it on to the string itself. This one has two clicks, so you gotta put it in the same one. I always put it all the way in against the uh, bow square itself. And then I look at the center of the plunger, and right here is eight and a half inches to the center of my plunger. So you can measure it that way. You can also go from the throat of the grip to the center of the string, and you'll see it's eight and five eighths here. So it's actually a little different from the grip instead of to the center of the plunger. So there's always a lot of questions as to which brace height to run. Basically every bow manufacturer or limb manufacturer has recommended brace heights in their catalogs uh, or in their manuals that they send along with the bows. So what's really important, I find that you typically set your brace height to the limb manufacturer's recommendations, not to the riser's recommendations, with the exception of the HP geometry in Hoyt's risers. Uh, that actually changes the actual grip position and space relative to the actual limb pockets. It moves it further back, about 700 thousandths of an inch. So your brace height will be 700 thousandths of an inch shorter on an HP geometry Hoyt riser, but 
Um, very few other manufacturers make limbs that'll snap into that bow. So really just stick with limb manufacturer's recommendations. So how do you adjust brace height? It's very, very simple. All you do is you add or remove twists to the string. So if the limb tips are in fixed in space, as I shorten the string, the string will pull the limbs more back and then the string will get further and further away from the riser. So using that method, as you add twists to the string, your brace height will grow. Doesn't matter which side you add twists from because it's essentially one solid piece. So if you add twists from the bottom, you're adding twists. If you add twists from the top, you're adding twists. Really not important. Just adding twists raises your brace height, removing twists lowers your brace height. Center shot is very simple. It's just where the arrow is in relation to the bow. So we want it to be pushed straight or be centered when you're at full draw or when you're releasing the string. So really all you need to do is adjust this thing here that's called the plunger. So if I take this off, I'll be able to show you it much simpler. So this side of the plunger here is adjusting the depth of how far in or out the plunger tip is. It's a simple threaded, it's 5 16 24 thread. So that means there's 24 threads an inch, just for random facts. Anyway, you can see here there's a set screw. You just loosen that set screw, and then you can adjust it and screw it further in or back it further out. So you can adjust where the arrow rests against the plunger and how far out, how far in, or in the center it will be uh, set. So it's very simple, just adjusting the center shot depth with the plunger. I get questions all the time about arrows being difficult to select for their spine chart for their, their bow. Um, people will use a, a program to select their arrows or they just have a hard time getting arrows to spine for them. And typically I see that with youth archers. And the reason that that is, is because they typically use a clicker that's mounted on the sight bar itself. So instead of the clicker being mounted here, just in front of the riser, there's a clicker mounted on the bar out here. So their arrows are much longer. So there's a difference between arrow length and draw length. Draw length is simply the measurement from the knock of the arrow when you're at full draw to the front of the riser. That's generally your draw length, which is not the same as your arrow length, obviously, because you can change how long your arrows are independent of your draw length. For example, I've shot both of these arrows out of the same bow, basically. This X10 here is roughly 30 inches. Well, it's about 29 and a half inches from the groove of the knock to the end of the shaft. Whereas this longer one here is about 36 inches. So when you're spine checking arrows or checking spine charts to select arrows, go with your arrow length, not your draw length. Especially if you're gonna run longer arrows because they're stiffer, you wanna use them indoors, or you're a youth and you're starting out and you're gonna anticipate growing, use the arrow length, not the draw length. Now, arrow length is, is measured from the throat of the knock, so inside of the throat of the knock to the end of the shaft. That's how arrow manufacturers have used a market standard to measure arrow length. So again, it's from the groove of the knock to the end of the shaft, not to the end of the point. Okay, and last we're gonna talk about our sights, how we move them, how we adjust them, and what the different adjustments make. For those of you out there that are new, we are adjusting our sight on the front, the front sight, not the rear sight. So anybody that's shot a rifle or a gun before, you adjust your rear sight. So when you're shooting a, a bow, you're adjusting the front sight. It's the opposite adjustment as a rifle. So if our groups are low, we want to move our sight down. If our groups are high, we want to move our sight up. And the same with right and left. If you're hitting right, move your sight right. You always move it towards the arrow, not where you want the arrow to go like in a rifle. So also at a sight bar, if you have a sight bar like this, if I set it here versus here, when I move it in like this, my impact point will go up a lot. So I have to adjust my sight to compensate for that. So keep in mind, it's extremely important to always put your sight bar in the same location every single time and use the same hole every single time as I do here. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get notified every time a new video is uploaded. For seminar and book info, head to jkaminski.com or click on the link below. 
And uh, yeah, I appreciate you guys watching. If you would, please share this video. It really helped get the word back out that I am back out there. Thanks again. Take care.